two, one, and we're back. Welcome back to Nerds in the Gym podcast. I'm Marco. And I'm Brandon. That means you have to say the date. Oh, today's date is 6 12 21. For those of you new to the show, I am Brandon. This is Marco. We got you. Oh, face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, we tell jokes. <laughs> really got them. Do you know what today is? No. Is the Saturday? 40th anniversary of one of the greatest action adventure movies to ever release Raiders of the Lost Ark. Really? It released on a Saturday? Well, it released on the 12th. Do you know what day that was? Uh, I would assume it had to be like a Friday back in the 40 years ago, right? I don't know. I don't know the rules about movies in this. Yeah, uh, I don't know what you're sharing. I got a black screen, bud. You have a black screen right now? How about now? Okay, now yeah. I see it. All right. Um, no, the, I, the, I I just shared this because this is a lot. There's a lot of nerd news I found within the past week. So you want to kind of just uh, dive into nerd news? Because some of it has to do with Indiana Jones. I feel like you came in wanting to talk about Indiana Jones. And no matter what I said, we were going to get there one way or another. So go oh, ahead. Yes, we are. Uh, so first off, we have the first images from set of Indiana Jones 5. We have Harrison Ford. I, I This is like in England or Scotland somewhere, from what I've been reading. Um, but we have him there, suited up, looking like Indiana Jones, just a bit older now. <laughs> but there's there's been a lot of photos that have released. Uh, here is a set of them at some castle. Like, here's a... So... I wonder what the time period is for this movie. Because... I thought you told us like a month ago. So, no, I said uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull took place around 64. Right, so this has to be 70s. The 70s. However, I found a new photo today. They had a close-up of Indiana Jones and he's got the dots on his face. Are they de-aging him? Oh, honestly... Disney could do that. I never even thought about that. So, or do we have a movie that is taking place in the 70s with flashbacks? Could be both. I think that, so we've never really. S- or they could be using old footage. That too. Could be using old footage. But uh, the only time we've seen a flashback in Indiana Jones was in The Last Crusade when they did the flashback to him as young Indy to just so, show how he got the scar and how he got the hat and stuff. Well, I'm pretty sure they did that so they could do the TV series that no one watched. <laughs> Boom. Roasted. Um, well, in a way, the second one is all flashback, right? The se- yes, because the second one is a, a prequel. prequel. That is right. And in a way, he's always telling this. Isn't that Indiana Jones? He's always telling the story. Is that this is the story how he did that? No. Is that how it works? He's I know for the young indie series they had an older version of Indiana Jones telling the young stories. You watched it. I did not watch it. Oh, okay. I, I was just like you were like twenty two magical episodes of not Harrison Ford. <laughs> Wasn't the kid that played no, the kid that played young Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade was Joaquin Phoenix's brother, River Phoenix. Sure. No, I know that for a fact. What a weird tidbit of knowledge. Are you a big River Phoenix fan, Mark? No, he's dead. R.I.P. But yeah, so, oh, and then I forget who this guy's name is. Toby Jones? Yeah, Toby Jones is co-starring with him, it seems like. I don't know who Toby Jones is. He's been in a lot of things, but I don't know if Indiana Jones is one of them. No, it is not. So, and it's interesting because this comes from the same photo where they have the dots on his face. So, is this a character of the past that they're also bringing into the... The dots was the fourth one? That was Crystal Skull? No, I'm saying the dots on his face for the, uh, like, de-aging. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought there was... I saw Crystal Skull maybe once. 
It's not that bad of a movie. So I thought there was something in Crystal Skull that made the dots relevant. You kept talking about I didn't want to. No, no, no. I my nerd no. Card the dots is away. for the mapping of the de aging for the facial expressions. Gotcha. So well, that's a nephew to Harrison Ford because he wanted to do this five years ago and they kept pushing. Yeah, it I back. know. <laughs> well, I think it. The movie was supposed to come out this year, but because of COVID, they couldn't film last year. I don't want to hear excuses. I just want to hear a whip crack. Which. But yeah, he's all suited up, ready to go, it seems like. I didn't hear a whip crack. Which. There we go. Is that what you were? Okay. But yeah, there, there's even this clip of uh, the castle burning. So we're going to get some hardcore action scenes with... What is he now, 80 years old? He's getting up there. I don't he's know. He's going to be 80, 80 when the movie releases, I think. I mean, good for him. Oh, I know. But I, I am so excited, even though he's, you know, in his late 70s. So. What bothers like, you know, me with Harrison Ford is he has so many good movies that aren't but, Indiana Jones and Star Wars. I know, I know. Uh, he was is such it, a good actor. Was the one Mosquito Coaster? Is that the one where he's on the island? Yes. Great movie. He plays like a psychopath, essentially. Like the guy's just out of his mind, really. Oh, uh, I'm thinking of a different movie. Um, but any, any, uh, the Fugitive? Amazing. Air Force One? So good. I get those <laughs> ones confused. <laughs> oh, man. And then it but, hit like this peak where I think he semi-retired in like the 2000s. Late 2000s. Kind of, yeah. And then the he only had time to come he back. Come out of, the only time he would come back is if they wrote him like a massive paycheck. So do you know there's like a little bit of a game between him and Sam L. Jackson? No. Please so tell. they have a game to see who can uh, accumulate more money from films. Oh, really? Yeah. So like they just go back and forth. I, fe I feel like Sam L. Jackson has to have won it by now just because of the Mar his Marvel appearances. Like for one movie or? No, like total. Oh, total? Yeah. Well, it's a very dark way because it's only going to end one way. Death? Right, one of them's going to have to pass away. I, I think it's just, like, during their time alive, whoever gets more money from all the films. Have have they ever done a movie together? No, but I I don't think they have. Yeah, I don't think they have. They definitely should. I forget how old Samuel L. Jackson is. He's up there, too. He's around the same age. Maybe a couple years younger. I think 76 and 78 are the ages of them. Well, they both um, look great. But, like... Oh, you they, know what I'm excited for, though? What? Is the press junkets for these. Because Harrison Ford has zero tolerance for these press interviews. I know. And you can tell. He sits there in his chair, and you can just tell he'd rather be anywhere else in the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's in his contract. He does. He only has to do X amount of them. Oh, yeah. So you're going to have, like, the fourth lead doing interviews for Indiana Jones 5. Oh, uh, yeah, working with Harrison was great. He's so cool. One day on set, he did blank, blank, blank. And there, and you watch the movie, it's like the person was in two scenes. Who, who, there was, I think it was John Boyega. He was like, I wasn't sure if he liked me or not on set. <laughs> he was like, because the, I think the first day he had, like, a four-foot-tall, uh, Han Solo figure in the Stormtrooper outfit and he gave it to Harrison Ford to sign for him and Harrison Ford just kind of had like a reaction of like the We're hell working. are you doing kid we are working what are you doing <laughs> and then John Boyega dropped the Millennium Falcon door on his leg and broke it I thought that was J.J. Abrams I thought it was somebody on the uh... I didn't know if they released it I just joked Oh, but Speaking of Star Wars, we have a lot of Star Wars news, too. So, we're going to the Book of Boba Fett now, which comes out at the end of this year. Uh, you forgot the biggest Indiana Jones release. The biggest Indiana Jones? You remember our very first episode where you made fun of that woman in Indiana Jones that lives locally? <laughs> Over in Beckett, Mass. Well, she recently did an interview where she said Indiana Jones was not a pedophile. How would he have been a pedophile? 
in the original script, when they talk about her character, they say that he has loved her since she was 14. Obviously, they didn't put it in a movie, but it's in an original script somewhere. But aren't so they, aren't they around the same her. age? No. In, in the movies, they're not, like, the same age? Not according to the backstory. Oh, okay. So, the more you know. I think that's George Lucas talking, first of all. Hey, for the record, she says it. I'm going to agree with yeah. her, because who's going to be on this podcast? She is. We're not getting George Lucas. But we're going to get Marion Raven. As long as she doesn't listen to that first episode. And I we haven't released it. Jokes. Oh, really? Those uh, first four episodes I still have. Oh, that's a shame. Because I was waiting for a time to release it. Like, you know, the... You know, th- those, those ones I think we got a little too foul on. I believe I, and that's after I edited them yeah. pretty, pretty extensively. Yeah. So, oh man, you know what we should do? When we put some more time in this, we should have a, like almost like a sports show where there's a ticker at the bottom that we can update as we go. Offensive things being said? No, just like this one would be Indiana Jones, not a pedophile. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> we, Marco's we, wearing red shirts. We should have a live like breaking news thing at the bottom and like it pops up breaking news Indiana Jones not a pedophile uh, <laughs> any updates on the Indiana Jones game no that that may be coming tomorrow actually so uh, Microsoft and Bethesda have a showcase for their games tomorrow and Bethesda is the one that's publishing the Indiana Jones game and I'm very excited so you're saying I came too soon yeah that's what she said. That's what he Ridiculous. said. Sorry, I'm in a good mood today. I don't know why, Marco. Because it's Saturday. It's a nice Saturday, too. It's like a lazy Saturday. Yeah. You were up at what, 4 a.m.? I got up at uh, 6.45 today. Oh, sleeping in. Yeah. Yep. Was this your Saturday not to teach at the No, gym? this was my Saturday to teach, but I was to teach until 8 a.m. Oh, you guys don't have early classes? Well, we have a 7 a.m., but Sean teaches every Saturday. Oh, okay. He teaches every Saturday at 7 a.m. Right. Yep. Cool. Cool. Okay, go go ahead. You done with Indiana Jones? Because we're not going back. No, we're not going back. Maybe next week. Book of Boba Fett! Unless we go to the Indiana Jones room. What? Book of Boba Fett. Oh, yeah. We're talking Book of Boba Fett now. Sorry, you went in a real high register there. You're, Book of Boba Fett! I think you were sick of me. I want the Boba. I want Boba. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, so first off, apparently Bosk is going to be in it. He's the reptilian like lizard guy. He was in the Clone Wars and he was in Episode Five as a stand-in for like Clone Wars TV shows or Clone Wars Clone Wars movie? TV show. Okay. He was the like crocodile-looking one for the bounty hunter. Yeah, he had, he was with the pirates. Yep. Um, uh, it's completely rap production, so I'm pretty sure that what wherever that came from had to be an inside source if the rumor is true. And so, you know what's crazy? Book of Boa Fett wrapped. Mandalorian hasn't started filming. I was going to get to that news, actually. Oops, sorry, guys. It, it's fine. Shot it's fine. Early. But. Came too soon again. Book of Boba Fett will reportedly be a more closely linked spinoff of The Mandalorian, almost serving as a season 2.5 of the Mando series. Whatever. I mean... So, uh, what what I heard is, is that they are... They're, like, a lot of the characters from The Mandalorian are crossing over with it. Which is why it feels like Mandalorian season 2.5. But if... if so... It's out there, Mandalorian season, or season three, I should say. Season three has not started production. That means we, every day that goes by without production starting is like a year before it gets released. You think so? You think it takes that long? Well, it was around February of last year when they start, when they were filming, finishing up filming for the release of October this past year. Seems like you're really good at this math. 
it's almost like a year. So we're not getting it in December is what you're saying? Yeah, I don't think we're getting it in December. Well, hypothetically, they start filming in July. When can I get it? What's the earliest? I would say probably like March next year. It takes a year? I'd say like I'd say anywhere from 8 to 12 months. No, I think they can speed it up. Well, because I would say if they started filming in like July, those first episodes will come out in March, and then the last episodes that they film will come out in like June, July time frame. I mean, that's nifty, but yeah. my thing is I really like having Mandalorian drop in December. It's kind of my thing. Yeah. What am I going to do in December now? I don't know. What am I going to watch? The Book of Boba Fett. I mean, I, I'll watch it, but it's just like, you're just kind of switching out the shows on me. Well, we have more news about the Book of Boba Fett and what it's about, too. We're going to Excuse see... Me. So you're, this is going to tell us what it's about? Yeah, we we uh so if I want so if I wanted to ask you Marco what do you want to see in the show? Is this going to ruin your next segment? No. Should I wait till after we Go ahead read your thing, okay. sorry. Tomorrow Morrison. I, I see what you're trying to do and I'm screwing it up and I know it, so I'm going to acknowledge that, but it's probably going to keep happening. Go okay. ahead. Tomorrow Morrison, the guy who plays Boba Fett said Classic. we're going to see his meaning boba's past and where he's been since the empire strikes back now's the time to actually go back in time and check out his journey and find out more about him so this isn't just current boba fett we're getting all the way from empire strikes back and onward well so we're going to see what if some de-aging and stuff going on if he takes the mask i don't off. think you have to he is aged magnificently like i don't think I don't really see a big difference between how he looks now and how he used to look. No, not really. I think it's hard to tell, too, because he had all that makeup on from uh, the scars from the Sarlacc pit. Mm-hmm. But. So, you got the pit, right? Yep. What if that's just the backstory? He literally gets out of the pit like 10 minutes before Mando shows up. That, that's when he gets out? That's it. That's his whole backstory. The rest is him just waiting, what, meditating. What if he got out, like, right after he got kicked in? Oh, my gosh. That'd be amazing if he got out of the Starlight Pit, like, 12 minutes after Luke leaves. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's gone. And then he's just like, oh, man, that was a rough 10 minutes. <laughs> Did you forget? I have a rocket on my back. Hey, he d remember, he doesn't have the rocket. He has to get it back from Mando. Because Mando gets it as yeah. payment from the sheriff. Right. It's a whole thing. I mean, they almost have to. Because where we leave him, he's on that stupid desert planet, Tatooine. He's now got Jabba's palace. Yep. That doesn't leave him a whole lot of stuff to work with. Well, I think he just plays... He would just end up being Jabba in a different way. Do you want the sharpshooter with him in this show? Uh, the sharpshooter who's... Are you talking about... Oh, oh, the girl? The woman, Marco. Let's be appropriate. Um, also, don't assume her gender. It, it, sh the person? The, is that, you're talking about the one that he... It was later revealed that he was the one that fixed her after getting shot, right? Yes. Marco, that show had five characters. I was... No, I wasn't sure if you are talking about um the girl assassin from the Clone Wars that he... That, like, kind of, like, groomed him. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah. If we get anything more Clone Wars, I'm for it. I'm about three episodes into this bad batch. How are you liking it? I need to start it. I like it a lot. It, I heard the first episode's, like, an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> it's a movie. <laughs> Which is fine, but you could break it up into 20-minute sections and just do more episodes. Uh... Uh, so that's exciting. Why is Ian McGregor talking to? Hold on, Pascal. Oh, they they, they had some like interview thing going on. But before we jump into that, to answer your question, Mandalorian season three will start filming at the end of twenty twenty one or early twenty twenty two. I forgot. Oh, we're just taking a year. I off. forgot that we had that information. 
Why? Why do we have to take a year off? What was everyone so busy doing? Wonder Woman 84? Um, hold on. That was worth it. Hold on. No. Nope. Pedro Pascal nope. no, has not... has What's he doing the Last of Us? For HBO? Right, that video game movie that they're doing a TV show with Tom Holland. Yeah. I don't need it. It's going to be great. <laughs> hey, this but we get season 2.5 of The Mandalorian acceptable. in the Book of Boba Fett. What's that? We get we get season two point five through the book of Boba Fett. I wonder if Manda's in that at all. That would be interesting, but it doesn't seem like they knew each other at all when they met. Unless they have to do like uh like scenes where like they're separated, they're not with each other. But yeah, no, I think they can get him at least for one episode. Maybe. I just don't think him and Boba can interact at all. Why is that? Because when they meet uh, in episode six of season two, it like they it act, like they act like they've never met each other before, and then um, Mando was giving him a hard time about the armor and his birth lineage. No, no. So you're thinking it's not going to be all flashback though. If it's Mandalorian two point five, it's yeah, on the current yeah. timeline with backstory. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Saying. No, just miscommunication. But um, so I guess we'll go into there's some Obi Wan information, not too much, but uh, yeah. So Ewan McGregor and Pedro Pascal were in this Variety studio, studio actor on actors. I'm not sure why they chose those two. It probably has to do with that they're both doing Star Wars shows, but they were mm -hmm. just kind of interviewing, talking each other. This is where Pedro Pascal confirmed that they haven't shot a third season at all. Um, and then Ewan McGregor went through and he says how it re how the Mandalorian pulled him back into the Star Wars world. Um, mm -hmm. He said, it pulled me back into the Star Wars world in a way I didn't expect. It blew me away how much I loved it. And I think this is also part of the reason why he was so excited to get back to the role of Obi-Wan. Because I think they're being... Uh, uh, they're gonna write it very similarly. Shots fired on the last three movies. Yeah. And then, Ewan McGregor also said in this interview how, um... Oh, where'd you go? Oh, no, I'm still listening. Okay. Uh, he said how the CGI version of Yoda in the Star Wars prequel films didn't feel like Yoda compared to its pupper counterpart. It's not nearly as endearing. I have a lot of problems with that. When you see the Yoda puppet, you know it's a puppet. Yeah. When you see the CGI one in 1, 2, and 3, that's my Yoda. He can move, he can Hold jump. Hold on. you going to do? Have a lightsaber battle with a puppet? He's technically only CGI in episodes 2 and 3. They added CGI and took away the puppet when they remastered episode 1. Nope. Episode 1 originally had a puppet. Puppets? Not for me. And then... More news about the Obi Wan's show is that production was. Why do you like puppet or do you like CGI? Don't. I like I like the puppet. So you, we, three when he's fighting Count Dooku, you're gonna have him fight a Muppet. Well, no, obviously they need to put CGI in for that. Well, you can't have both, Marco. Ooh. You have to pick a character. I, I think what they should do is, regardless, they should film with the puppet in those like scenes, like where they're in the Jedi Council and stuff, and then they can CGI over it. Why the extra step, Marco? Because I think it helps the actors. I know they're acting. You leave the actors alone. I know they're acting, but still. Hayden Christensen did the best he could with what was given to him. You better not slam him, because he's going to be an Obi-Wan, and we're going to have to love him all over again. I won't say anything. They flew that scruffy nerf herder down to Toronto. I won't say Toronto anything, because we need to get him on the show. God. You did great, you guys Hayden. Went too hard on the. You guys went too hard too early no. on him. That was the first in those lost episodes. You guys went after him. I defended him. No. Um. What a weird thing to say. But Obi Wan Kenobi production will apparently take many months. So they haven't started that either. No, they started filming, but 
I have a feeling the editing and stuff is going to be a little bit more crazy than The Mandalorian. Probably. Oh. I heard they were filming in Boston not too long ago. They were filming in Boston. So they might be doing it in sections. Yeah. And um, Liam Neeson said, obviously, he can't neither confirm nor deny, th or he can't confirm this. He can definitely deny it. But he said uh, that he hasn't been approached to be in the Obi Wan show. They don't have enough money, he said jokingly. So this is the perfect answer because obviously he's going to be part of it in some way. Yeah. Even if they. So that's why it's perfect. But he's also not um, Doc Ock from Spider Man who's just giving away the plot. Yeah. Who confirms everything or Russell Crowe. Liam Neeson answered it perfectly like, haha, I'm not there. So if he shows up, it's amazing. Yeah. Or if he just does a voiceover, it's great. Yeah. He's not giving away the story. Yeah, yeah. Want some more Star Wars news? Um, let me think. Any other Star Wars news that I have? Is there anything for a next movie? So, that is where I'm going. Oh, look at me go. Taika Waititi is unsure when his Star Wars movie will begin production. There's a whole lot of other little things that I've got my sticky little fingers attached to, so we'll see. This is the one that did Thor, right? Yep. So, it's not great news, but we know it's coming at some point, I guess. I rewatched the third Thor movie last week. Holds it's up. It's the best one. So good. The rock guy is great. <laughs> hey, this is Meek. <laughs> Say hi to the people, Meek. Started a revolution and uh, not enough pamphlets got out. Uh, no one showed up. But, yeah. I'm pretty sure that was voiced by him, right? The director voiced him? That's a good question. Grog is his name, I believe. Honestly, I forget his name. But, I don't know. I just... I think there was a couple different movies and different timelines being worked on. I haven't heard anything since the show's got popular. Yeah. As, so, what I like is that Disney Plus isn't leaving me with a lull. There's, like, always, always something have, like, to go. Show. Like a new show yeah. coming out. I can only imagine you're watching what's happening on my screen right now. No, I was actually staring yeah. at you. I try not to look ahead. That's why I got excited when I guessed the Star Wars oh, okay. movie. All right. Th this is Where are we going This now? is just like I thought was, would be interesting. We've talked about Rick and Morty. Grand Theft Auto Five is one of my favorite games of all time. There's a Rick and Morty mod in Grand Theft Auto Five. You can fly... In Rick's little UFO, you can play as, as Rick. Rick. And Morty's in the game as well. And he just sucker punched him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, a bunch of oh my god! <laughs> the Mortys are shooting the other Morty. That is freaky. I just thought it was, That's funny. It's just cool, like, video game mods at their finest. Doing... So someone designed this, or the uh, actual designer? No, no, somebody this? made this. Somebody, like, random person in the community. That's impressive. Yeah. Well, it's funny, because that just shows that they could easily make a video game. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they actually would. They could. I feel like they really, I... like, you had the Simpsons hit and run back in the day. You can definitely do it. Those types of games used to be, like, jokes. Yeah. So when one was actually good, it was really funny. Yeah, yeah. But something like this, you could either do it really well, but I see Dan Harmon being the type of guy that would be like, oh, I'll do it, but it's going to be a side-scroller <laughs> for uh, for the original Nintendo. That is true. Like, I, I think it could be a really fun open-world game, too, especially with, like, the portal gun and everything. It's so crazy how much they fit <clears throat> into yeah. this series, and they're very short seasons. Yeah. Uh, is that this weekend or next weekend it comes out? Is it the 17th? I think it's the 17th, next Thursday. What? It comes out on Thursdays, not Sundays? It's Oh. No, it's not the 17th. Oh, gosh. I don't... I'm not good... This is my first Adult Swim Soon, TV though. show. I'm sorry. You never watched Dragon Ball Z? That's Adult Swim. Oh, well, Toonami. I, I've never seen it, but... That's what we should do, Marco. You and me. We'll rewatch it this this summer. 
what the we'll call it sleeveless summer boys of summer watch anime i think i'm good locking it in well we still never watched the uh, justice league huh no we haven't there's so much it's four hours all right, moving on. What else do we got? Uh, nothing really like important to you, but it, it's uh something I'm super excited about. Nothing really important to you, you uneducated swine. Well, we have uh, Battlefield 2042 releasing October 22nd. Do you know what Battlefield is? I do. So they upped the game a little bit this year. It's no longer 32 players versus 32 players. We're doing 64 versus 64, 128 players on one map. Seems like 34 people are just going to get killed instantly. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Um, so, like, the Battlefield uh, developers got a lot of crap because uh, <clears throat> they went Battlefield 4. Then the next main installment in the series was Battlefield 1, which was based off of World War 1. And there was only so much content that they could put into a game based on World War 1. Mm -hmm. Then the next game they made was Battlefield 5, and it was supposed to be what's called a live service game, where they continuously updated for three years. After about a year, they just scrapped it, because again, only so much stuff you can put into a game based on World War 2. And pe like mm -hmm. they got shit on for that game because of... Lack of content. Uh, people were upset that it wasn't historically accurate and stuff. So now this time, they're going balls to the wall. They're do going... What year is it right now? They're going 20 years in the future, essentially. Going to year 2042. To make a near futuristic game. And... It already has more likes than the Battlefield 5 reveal trailer got. Like, it, let me tell you, the hype behind this game is bigger than... Any game I've seen in the past, like, five, eight years. How long till the server crashes on the first day? Oh, oh, One it's going to... No, it, it's going to happen... Two hours? Right as soon as the game releases, there's going to be server problems. Yeah, so they're doing a futuristic battle game. So you mean they're doing Halo? So, so it's not that futuristic, though. Didn't Call of Duty do that, too, with the futuristic one? That was, like, the fifth one. So, no, that was, like, the, the, worst the 16th one. one. So, Call of Duty, after Call of Duty Ghost, which was, like, a modern near future. So, I think, like, it took place in, like... Actually, no, it took place in, like, 2015 or something, the year uh, it came out. Or something like that. Like, two years after it came... Uh, it took place, like, two years after when the game actually came out. And then Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which came out before Call of Duty Ghost, took place in the year 2025, and it came out in 2012. That, to this day, is still looked at as probably the best Call of Duty game of all time. Disagree. I, I think it's the best one. Don't too. need it. Don't need it. Don't well, the problem, it. the thing is, is, like, is it was near futuristic, but, like, the technology wasn't, like, oh, this is absurd. This, like, isn't, like, like, it was possible technology and actually a lot of the technology that was in that game is like stuff that's coming out now um but then they after call of duty ghost they went to advanced warfare where there were jetpacks oh i'm thinking of advanced warfare okay sorry yeah and that was the rough one see i i liked i liked advanced warfare it wasn't like the i do remember i remember ghost because there's one scene where you're falling off the train or whatever you're falling off of, and you had to press the X button at the right time to punch the guy, and it was like a sequence of talking. So their talk fighting is very weird, and it took me probably about two hours to hit the X timing right, because it was so touchy. <laughs> oh, man. I was so mad. But, um... I was just like, why, why not just show the clip? Why do I have to advance? watch three minutes? And every time you didn't miss it, it went back to the beginning of the talking portion, which that is five minutes is, that long. That is rough when they send you so far back in video games. It, it was the longest, longest section of a video game in a long while. But Advanced Warfare was the one with Kevin Spacey. No, I like that one. What am I thinking of that I didn't like? Was it Black Ops 3? That was a jet. Uh, that was a jetpack one. We can move on. We're not, I'm not going to get it. But yeah, my my personal like 
top three Call of Duties right now are Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, and Black Ops 4, and those are all futuristic. Uh, for me, it's Call of Duty Korean War. That didn't come out yet. Um, Call of Duty, probably Vietnam 84, so after the war. Actually, technically, the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War that's out right now, they have Vietnam scenes in it. Too soon, Marco. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm super excited for... Uh... So actually, in 2006, Battlefield came out with Battlefield 2142. So this is like, I think the whole reason they're doing 2042 is it's kind of like a prequel to 2142. Mm-hmm. Like 100 years prior. Why not Call of Duty Cavemen? Imagine that, a game where you're just beating each other with sticks. Sticks, Stones. rocks, and you got first one to get fire wins. <laughs> Whoever Call can... of Duty Ancient Egypt. It's not capture the flag, it's light the torch. Call of Duty Spartacus. <laughs> they actually, there's this game that just came out, it's called uh, Chivalry 2. And it's basically, like, it takes place, like, way back in the day. It's just swords, spears, and stuff. You just attack. Like, it's just hand-to-hand combat, essentially. It looks like stupid fun. I'll try anything once. I'm trying to think. What is that game? I, I can't think of the name. The last one I played, it was on a pirate ship. It's the guy that's going back in time with his memories. Assassin's Creed? Black Flag? That's the one. What's uh what's the newest Assassin's they Creed? They have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which takes place in England and Scotland, I believe. Where, where are they going next with that one? I don't know. I they I think they're taking a break. Luckily, can we uh, get a sequel to the movie while they take a break? Was the movie even good? I never saw it. It was one of those movies that got taken out of theaters after a week. <laughs> nice job, guys. I think he had Cumberbatch in it, too, which is the funny thing. He just took the money and ran. He hits it out of the park. But I, I like Assassin's Creed Odyssey I played. I really like that one. That one was all based off of Greek mythology and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it, For me, I just uh, I think my issue is I played them in a row. Yeah. So by the time I was done with Black Flag, I was just like, all right, we've done this game identically every time. Yeah. So, that means I'm two behind, maybe three. Black Flag was the... Because f- they did the, like, the 1920s one. Uh, you are... Wa- Black Flag was the last one you played? I think so. So, they did the 1920s one, this Valhalla one. They did a 1920s one? Yeah. Is that the one I based in so. London? Yeah. Okay, so there was another one before that called Assassin's Creed Unity, which took place in France. Okay, eh, three behind. It only takes you two weeks. Oh to no, beat no, it, though, no! So, I think I think you're actually further behind than you think you are. Go ahead, bring up the list. I'll tell you which oh, ones. Oh, we're we're bringing up. We are bringing up. Is it... okay? Let's see here. If I scroll down, so after Assassin's Creed Four, Black Flag, there was Assassin's Creed Rogue. Which one of these was just like an expansion pack? There's one that it wasn't even really a I game, I think that right? is Rogue, actually. Okay, so we can skip that then one. Then you have Assassin's Creed Unity, which took place in France, I believe. I don't know anything about that one, unless that's the one I'm thinking of with the horse and buggies and things. There weren't buggies in this one. Hmm. Then you have Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which took place in England, or in, like, London. Okay. Then Assassin's Creed Origins, which took place in ancient Egypt. Oh, I forgot about that one. Uh Uh-oh. Then Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which took place in ancient Greece. Oh, damn. And then we get to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is the newest one. Yeah, so I'm quite, quite a bit behind. I think Syndicate may have had the... Like horses with the carts on them that you could drive that's so funny brandon just missed out on one i've been so far out of the loop on him you just well my thing is like how many times can i climb a tower marco for a save checkpoint to jump so off assa- and it goes assassin's creed oh. origins made it more of a rpg 
like you level up your gear and stuff and you find new loot as you go through and you're constantly upgrading it and the uh certain areas have villains that are harder than other areas so it's more like uh fallout essentially i mean you could have always done that even the older ones because you had x amount of missions to do yeah but i don't know after a while of climbing those towers just for a safe point I didn't eat it. How many hours do you think of your life you wasted climbing towers in this game, Marco? Well, let's see. I was about... Um, it takes 35 seconds to climb one tower. I was about 30 hours into Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I'm still not... So that's, what, two hours worth of climbing towers? Well, th I was basically going around the map only climbing the towers before I started the actual main story. Never get that time back. <laughs> and I haven't played it in over a year now, so... Uh, time to revisit. I bet you I could go through Ancient Greece without a map now, though. Was there any um, more nerd news? Uh, no, I didn't have any more, actually. Uh, it's official. WandaVision will not be getting a Season 2. Or does it get... It was Kind of a season two, just name something different. Elizabeth Olsen says it was a limited series. Yeah. They knew it going in that she's not going to do another one. Uh, Loki debuted it on Wednesday. I... Did you watch it? The, I, uh, I haven't heard anything about, like, is it, like, what is the consensus so far? Um, so I watched it late last night and I avoided spoilers. It's tough. The first episode's an hour long. But it's all, it's pretty much 49 minutes. There's a lot of credits. Yeah. But issue <clears throat> is uh, the first episode of the series, you have to set everything up. Yeah. They did it with WandaVision. They did it with Falcon Winter Soldier. You have to take that first episode to set up the story, and then they hit the ground running. So it's tough to say. Um, I don't know how to say it. It's an emotional journey. So you saw the trailer. They arrest Loki, the time yeah. police arrest Loki because of the Tesseract stuff. And if you think about it, he didn't really time travel. He just used it once to escape mm -hmm. and they busted him for it. So while they're on trial deciding what to do with him, because the time police like can erase you from the timeline, they go through like his greatest hits of the, of the movies and things he's done wrong and bad and trying to figure out what to do with him. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see the character of Loki, who's pretty villainous, but had that turn towards the end of the Avengers movies where he became a good guy. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting to see his reaction to those moments. Yeah. I think it's going to be good. Tom Hiddleston's a great actor, and it's just a really big swing. Owen Wilson is playing like the time police cop. As he said, wow, He's yeah. knocking it out of the park. Not yet. They I they have to put 30. it in there at some point. I think he's an on the joke. So I think he definitely will. Yeah. I think they save it. I, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> There's a five and a half minute video I found the other day of every single one of his wows in chronological order. Oh, I've seen it. It's so good. Oh, yeah. Wow. 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 Well, the idea that he got through all those movies without anyone recognizing it till like now. <laughs> The best one is the uh, wow. doing the lightsaber duel, but replacing the <laughs> noise with wow, wow, wow. Except that one, so good. <laughs> uh, sports news: Lamar Odom versus Aaron Carter last night. I just found about out about that this morning. Did you watch any of the highlights? Uh, I so at one point I saw the Carter guy jumping up at Lamar Odom, punching him in the face, and I was like, "What the hell is going on here?" And then Lamar Odom just like turned something on in his head and knocked him out. Oh, it was crazy! I don't even know if he landed that punch. Also, was that Chuck Liddell refing it? Chuck Liddell as a ref <laughs> in a boxing match. <laughs> You could tell Chuck Liddell honestly felt bad for Aaron Carter. <laughs> oh my god. I was like, what is going on here? So first thing, do you know who Aaron Carter is? No, I don't even know. I know Lamar Odom, he got he was um 
a basketball player and he got caught up with the Kardashian curse or something. Right. And then he like uh, had a huge drug problem. Yeah. The Kardashian curse. Keep going. So, so no, he, so he, I don't, I don't think he's in the league anymore. No, he's not. He like, so now he's kind of a joke. He's just another basketball player that squandered his money. And yeah. Was famous. And he was pretty much in a coma from an overdose for like a month. But anyway, so that's why he's doing celebrity boxing. Aaron Carter was the Backstreet Boys, Nick Carter's little brother. So he was like a Disney Channel musician. He had like two hit songs. Jake Paul. When me and Joe were like 13. What's that? I said Jake Paul. Something very similar. Okay. But he's got a bunch of like illness, mental illness going on and drug problems. Okay. So I should have sympathy but, towards him. It was very weird that this is the match that they came up with. And yeah, Aaron Carter just got beat up for a round and a half. So funny. Speaking of fighting, we have a pretty crazy UFC card tonight. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. We have Anansania versus uh, Vittori. I, I can't even pronounce the name. Figurito versus Moreno. Then Nate Diaz is making his return against Leon Edwards. He hasn't fought since the BAMF title last summer. Yeah. Uh, Damian Maya's fighting? Yep. I, I thought he was done. Like, how old are he? I'm not going to lie to you, Marco. Outside of the top three, I don't know too much about him. I Well, he's just like a jujitsu master, essentially. Oh, he's a big name. Um... But it's him versus uh, Belal Muhammad and then Jamal Hall Hill versus Paul Craig. But those fr- those other three fights, like you got Nate Diaz returning. I can't pronounce his name, but Figueredo has been on fire. Mm-hmm. And then Adesanya. Adesanya is just a beast. Yeah. No, it should be a good time. <clears throat> and then in a month we have... The one everybody's been waiting for, UFC 264, the McGregor Poirier uh, rematch. Rematch, yeah. Or a trilogy. That'd be good. Uh, is Noons fighting on that one too? Amanda Nunez? I don't think she is. I think she has her own now. She's fighting you know it's... UFC 265. We should uh, really have saved this one for Joe. He would have had to carry this conversation. Speaking of which, I'll be done in two weeks. Oh, sweet. So we'll be able to get back on a normal schedule for the summer. Yeah, like Mondays or something. Get Joe I'll in. be able to get back to the gym and yeah. get things moving. Sweet. Yeah, but... To find a time for me to get in there. I was just saying time. Just walk in. Oh, no. Well, if you and Joe aren't going to be there... I would rather just go solo. But if you and Joe are going to be there, I can go anytime before two. Oh, and, and then we'll get the Ozzy's food truck. Speaking of which, have they uh, got a place now? I think they have just their own permanent place for it. Where has it been? Has it been? I think I it's looked. like on Dalton Ave. That by the ambulance place? I don't know if it's by there, but, like, I, I'm pretty sure they just, like, set up shop at, like, their own personal property that they got. Hmm. Have you been there this summer? Is the chicken back? I have not been there this summer. Fool. You are a fool. I'm too lazy to drive out there is the problem. I have a lot of things going on in this basement. New location, 301 Dalton Ave every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 11 to one thirty. Yeah, that was always their hours. Never mind. Now we lost the sponsor. I hope you're happy. But it's it's the same place. 301 Dolan Ave. Last summer, I'm pretty sure I made myself sick towards the end. What, of going there? Well, eating too, I think, is the issue. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, I really should have started cutting back. It was so good. Well, after Joe blew out his kneecap and we stopped, I think we realized we had a problem. They did go that long. That is right. Oh, my God. Dude, how much money do you think we spent on there collectively? Was it eight bucks for a chicken? It ended up being like 20 bucks each. That's 60 bucks. I say 15. 
And we went like a solid 30 weeks. Why do you have to be the way you are, Marco? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, good. The mathematician is going to get the calculator up. 450 bucks. Each or? Yeah. Worth it. <laughs> Thirteen fifty for all of us. We probably just paid for their entire like uh, everything to keep up with like the equipment and stuff for the year. It is a weird thing to be a regular at a food truck, <laughs> and the look of sadness on their face when they turn around and they're like, seven sandwiches, <laughs> chicken." <laughs> You think like they like saw us coming up and they're like, not these guys again. Well, I think the guy was super stoked. Oh, yeah. The guy likes you a lot. <laughs> you guys got the grill. I'm gonna go talk to this boy. <laughs> hey, buddy, you're in really good shape. You sure you want to be eating chicken sandwiches? So weird. We got extra napkins every time Marco did the pickup. <laughs> I got those free sandwiches and fries. Where he's just like, <laughs> hey, chicken's gonna, <laughs> fries are free, but chicken's gonna cost you. Oh. Or the day you picked it up in the rain. What are you doing out in the rain, buddy? He, he literally came over to me outside in the rain, brought his own little umbrella out, <laughs> Hey, before you what a weird before you know it, I'll own the place. Marco's food truck. <laughs> uh, we need four grilled cheeses <laughs> without the bread. It's a block of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, you described it as a deli, Marco. Uh, no, you just but you're grilling it. You know, it's <laughs> oh, just hey, Craig, sauce. you better use enough of that non-stick spray. Craig. Craig's the worst. <laughs> no one else applied. Oh, man. <sighs> All right, sir. I feel like this is a good stopping it, point. We had some good topics. We kind of flew through a bunch of stuff at the beginning because I was very... I was so excited to go through all that news. <laughs> you hit some rapid fire, though. Yeah. You were... You were all topics all the time. Marco was actually on top of his game for once and wasn't just, uh... No, you did a good job, because as soon as we started, I was like, oh, I didn't look anything up. Oh, yeah, no, I... Oh, did you see the new Mark Wahlberg trailer? For what movie? In... Satiable or something? He's like a guy... How do I put it? He's a guy with some sort of mental illness that he can... I I couldn't tell you. I saw the trailer. I couldn't tell you. But if you didn't see it, there's no way I'm trying to talk week. about it. I'll have to watch it again just to try and figure it out. All right, man. Until next week, we've been nerds in the gym. I'm Brandon. And I'm Marco. We were messing with you in the beginning. Just remember that. And just remember, Harrison Ford is 70 years old, running around England, lighting things on fire. Actually. What are you doing with your life? Lazy right. asses. <laughs> All right. Until next time. Bye. Bye.